How did you get involved with that guy with the glasses? Okay, so originally um, I was first one of his fans of, on YouTube, but his YouTube account would keep on uh, getting removed from uh, by corporates and, and Fox, I guess, and, and other uh, other corporations. Uh, so basically, uh, when he announced his website, I uh, I, I subscribed there, and uh, and they quickly quickly opened a blog section. Uh, a blog section uh, asking for the users to uh, submit their their own brew, uh, their own shows and IDs. So I started uh, I started uh, publishing my uh, games you might don't know series there, uh, um, and and yeah, and I was crossing my fingers that I would get picked up eventually because they they, they literally said you know this this blog section exists so we can spot new talents and and hire them. And because we have plans for getting sponsored, etc. So it was, it was very exciting to uh, to publish my post there, and I was crossing my fingers and hoping to, and hoping to God, I would get picked up. So uh, about like two weeks later, after I first posted my videos, my games you might know series, uh, well, would you know it? I received an email from um, from Mike Michad, who's the guy who ran the website. And he said, "All right, you know, um, we'll we'll stop publishing games you might not know on the site, just as we are now publishing. Uh, back then, it was that Dude in the Suede, Film Brain, and the Spoony one just got picked up just uh, just the same week as me. But I actually originally didn't know that because um, my uh, my webmail wouldn't work this very week, and I was very upset. And I ended up seeing that they picked up the new talent on the site, and it was Spoony." I was like, who the f*** is this guy? The guy took my f***ing spot. You know, like, I'm so better than this guy. I was so extraordinarily jealous. And, 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 then, and then my, uh, my, my uh, hotmail decided to work again, and I figured out I was picked up as well. So I was like, all right, maybe this Spoony guy isn't so bad after all. <laughs> Where did you get the idea for games that you might not don't know? Uh, well... Basically, uh, the thing I had is that, all right, you know, I wanted to uh, do a video game show um, that was video game related because I love video games, all right, that's my whole life. And But the thing is that people were talking so much about always the same game. It was always about Super Mario Bros. 3 or Mega Man 2 or recent games. And I was like, nobody ever mentions the game that I grew up with, like the game I personally played and I think never really got spotlight. And... And I thought that, you know, like, you know, the internet is big enough, so we should have reviews of really good game that people seem to have forgot about. It wasn't the case. So my original idea was to spot, to put under spotlight games that, uh, that I grew up with and I and loved, and yet nobody seemed to love them as well. So it seemed that I was the only one loving these games, like Solstice, um, Jim Power in Mutant Planet, um, stuff like that, um, Metamorphic Force, so great, great games that that seem to have been forgotten. So yeah, basically I wanted to spotlight games that you guys might not know, really, that is the spot. Exactly. Yeah, I actually, uh, yeah? Was that um, inspired off of the games you might not know then? Well, actually it had little to do as well. Uh, at first I just wanted to have on YouTube uh, feature my uh, my favorite game soundtracks and maybe not stuff that were not well known but stuff that I would just love but I just happened to um, have grown up with an Atari ST and Amiga which aren't very famous computers back in the United States so anything that came out on these platforms are basically unknown for American people which is a shame because these uh, computers were extraordinary. They were basically Super Nintendo, but back in the NES days. I believe that had a spin-off called Game Soundtracks You Might Not Don't Know. Um, so I started featuring uh, on YouTube my uh, Game Soundtracks You Might Don't Know series, and there was something that was just called like the best soundtracks ever, something like that. And and, and after a couple, and since games, uh, games you might not know was getting some attention, I was like, all right, you know, let's uh, let's go on with that and, and call the show game soundtracks you might not know. And um, and at first, these wouldn't be published on uh, on that guy with the glasses. They would uh, only be you, you would have to click on my section and actually look for them because they wouldn't get a full 
uh, full first page feature because we figured out that you know this might be like too hardcore of a show for people to really uh, get interested with. And then I started like you know publishing a game soundtrack you might not know as well as a games you might not know at the same time. So this would eventually be a double feature of the day, and and people very liked really liked it. People really liked uh, the first they would get double feature. I think the one was Guardian Heroes, and and then you know the the show grew up on its own and ended up like as being worthy of a full feature of itself. Uh, it was hard to convince people that this could be a great show, but I'm really happy that this show is still running because it's ton of fun to make. It's really a passionate show. Like, it, it's great. With that guy with the glasses, two-year anniversary coming up, what was it like for you going to Chicago for the one-year anniversary with you being from France? Well, it was really surreal because, you know, when you start, uh, I started making my show in my grandparents' basement. And then I moved to UK and I started doing that in a, in a very student, you know, it was like a student room. It was so, such a small apartment and you just do your videos, you do your thing on your own. You get very little feedback. You actually don't get to see anybody from that world, which is, you know, it's all virtual pr practically. And all of a sudden you are um, offered a free trip to Chicago to meet all these incredible people that, you've, that you barely know or so little. Uh, just from Skype or the internet, and and so it was really surreal. And the thing that really impressed me the most was that it was really like visiting family, like long lost friends, uh, people that it felt like everybody was knowing each other, had known each other for years, yet it was the first time meeting each other. Uh, it was very surreal that you know uh, the site was capable of uh, creating such. Um, such interaction with people and such good connections. Um, it, it, was, it was incredible. Um, I, I really hope that this will go on and uh, this will become a stable in, in, um, in, in Channel Awesome and that guy with the glasses that, uh, that people will still you know, work as if they are part of the same, uh, maybe not family, but they really are friends. Uh, and, and every time you, meet, you get to meet them, well, they feel like yeah, it's just long lost friends that um, from a di that you see from a distance, but when you visit them, it's been like, you know, like it's been like we've known each other for years. It's crazy. What was it like writing a sitcom from a year ago in Chicago? Uh, you mean like writing this actual sitcom? You know, I wrote it. I wrote it uh, very, very quickly, very briefly. It took me like a day. Like, I was like, oh shit, that's right. I'm coming to Chicago, and I like. I like to do that sitcom. Oh shit! I need to think of something. So I started like you know thinking about who's who uh, who is going to be there, and and be like, all right, what kind of joke I can do with uh, Chrissy? All right, she has big boobs. Let's say let's do um, let's do jokes about her boobs. You know, uh, oh Sean, you know he's fat. Like, you know I'm gonna ask Sean if he's okay to do fat jokes. Uh, what am I gonna do with Lee? All right, Lee is in 2D or so. Uh, so I wrote stuff with Lee. Uh, oh, the nostalgia critic, let's make him a d and And I really wrote like these sketches. That's why there's very little structure to that uh, sitcom. It's just like clips put together because first uh, it was written very shortly with no real consistency, um, very little thought put into it. But also the fact that, you know, in Chicago, you know, like the event was not built around the fact that I would uh, film that sitcom, it was built around the fact that we, we would film the brawl, that was the big event, so basically like you would, I, I wouldn't have, you know, um, it, it wasn't possible for me to gather everybody in the same room and say, alright, let's shoot my sitcom for like the next five hours, no, I had to knock at everybody's room and say, alright, would you have time for a minute to shoot like this very little, little scene, so it was shot very sporadically, Basically, if you've seen a commentary, I say that, for example, the scene where I talk in French and there's the, uh, the cat that's, uh, that's, that's watching me talking in French. These two scenes have been shot, like, uh, within two days, basically. One scene has been shot two days after another. Uh, so it was very, um, yeah, the way it's been shot uh, basically um, sh uh, shows and transpires in the final product because it's so, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been written half the cuff. 
and it's been shot off the cuff, so it ends up being like just little sketches put together. But I think I did the, uh, I did my best to uh, to make sure it's still entertaining. Oh, uh, the team ball again. It was very surreal uh, because I only read the script like maybe one day before I would uh, fly to Chicago. Uh, well, I can't, and the thing is that, for example, it's so surreal that I can't believe it was one year ago. It seemed like yesterday, really. It's so fresh in my memory. It, it's, it is one year ago, and by internet standard, that's a long time. Um, but what happened is, um, is filming the brawl and being like next to uh, James Rolfe, because obviously uh, the Angry Video Game Nerd was a big influence for me. Um, and because he, I, I, I first discovered Jim Rolf back in 2006 and I immediately started to do like um, subti French subtitles uh, of his videos so I could share, share them with my friends and, and so I knew every single of his reviews by heart and when I met him like it was surreal uh, same for Kyle Justin and, and then like all of a sudden you're like wow like we have to do like this huge ass fan service collaboration video and that puts under a spotlight even some of the minor uh, personalities on the site, minor contributors. Not minor in terms of qualities, but minor in terms of like their audience, all right? Um, because I'm nowhere near as huge as James Rolfe or Doug. But like you know, all of a sudden you are in the same video, and um, and and they, they give you a spot on uh, you know next to them. Uh, it, it it was surreal, and the video like I couldn't wait to see the final video when I when I went back to UK. I was like man, like I hope to God that you know this this gets done quick because it was so exciting to show to shoot, even though it was very tiring. But it was so exciting, I can't wait to see that. And the final product was very good. I think I saw that video like a hundred of time now. Before I let you go, is there anything you would like to plug? Oh, um. Soon, uh, now I have um, FAQ shirts that you can buy on the awesomestore.com. And of course, uh, you know, as I said, it was the one year anniversary last year. It means that the two year anniversary is this month. So you guys can expect some surprises, all right? But uh, yeah, uh, stay tuned to the site, stay tuned to uh, all of my shows. The newest one, I think, is GameFap. Uh, which is not for children, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, get get yourself a FAQ shirt, and soon enough there'll be MP3s uh, available in the store, all made by Sad Panda. We wrote a song for about each of uh, Dagger Glasses contributors. It's very cool. It's very fun. It's very pop, and so we should get a CD coming up. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to be interviewed, Benzai. I really appreciate. it. Oh, thank you. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. And, uh, and yeah, man, uh, take care.